Now, you've organized a few uh, online businesses yourself. What, what is an example of one of your businesses? So one business, uh, and this is really close to heart because my wife actually runs it, is um, teaching event and wedding planning to, uh, to students all, all over the world. Uh, it's a very fast-growing profession, and so there is a big need for um, folks, uh, customers, to learn um, the basics of, of wedding planning. So her expertise was she brought uh, um, a lot of understanding of the market because she herself has been doing it for a decade. And we took that concept and turned it into an online program. Um, we've used uh, a mix of social media marketing and online marketing, uh, and, and the success has been phenomenal. When you say that she's teaching a certain type of planning, so what is it that you're selling? What is it that you're getting paid for? Do you, are you being paid uh, for the right to view certain videos, for example, to have the instruction? Correct. So it's, it's, uh, it's a full course that, uh, that starts with uh, how to plan all, ty all sorts of events. Um, there is offline coursework that the student has to do, so they have to actually have to uh, do these things. So it's, it's academic as well as practical. And then uh, at the end of it, uh, when uh, the student completes the course, they get a certification. Considering how much free information there is on the web, uh, do you ever feel that it's hard to compete with people who have comparable information who are giving it away for nothing? Um, so my analogy to, to that is creating a brand and creating value. For instance, you know, this glass of water is free. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you can walk into a restaurant and pay five dollars for for a bottle of Perrier. So there's, uh, you know, creating a brand, creating value that's beyond free is really, I think, the challenge of this, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs of the next generation. Are there any particular types of businesses that are especially good uh, niches right now? Places that are not fully served that somebody could get started. Right. So my personal experience has been. There are a lot of businesses that have missed the, the online revolution. So they're still doing business in sort of the mail order way of doing business, uh, where it's slow, it's not global, it's uh, not using all of the latest technologies and, um, and marketing techniques. Um, I would advise, if somebody's looking at starting a new business, I would advise them to look at existing businesses that have not really made the leap into social media, into marketing and t take them on as op opportunities. And the reason why I say this is because the, the, simply because the business exists today, there's a market for it. So with the social media, does that mean, for example, that you put your business on Facebook and you try to friend as many people as you possibly can, and you start on Twitter and you're constantly tweeting about your products and what you're up right. to? Right, and yes, exactly. Um, all of these social media channels have their unique nuances. Twitter is very different from Facebook. Um, in most of these channels, it's very hard to market something directly. Because, um, and giving, you know, giving the example of Facebook, most people are in Facebook to hang out and relax and chat with friends. So to sell directly on Facebook doesn't usually work. But building a community on Facebook is extremely helpful because th that community will eventually get your customers back to your website. Uh, same is true with Twitter, where there's a lot of conversations going on on Twitter, but it's, uh, if you try to sell things on Twitter, it doesn't work. So it's, it's great to find out what's going on in terms of your specific business, your specific industry. And um, for instance, following people that are uh, looking for things that you're selling. Now, you've taught courses, courses in this. Do many of your students actually go ahead and try to start their own online businesses? Right. So many of my students have, uh, have been extremely inspired by um, the course, um, especially in terms of sort of the hands-on value of, of act taking your idea and implementing it. A lot of them are on their way to establishing businesses. My intent is to actually, the next time I do this course, my intent is to take their, one of their uh, businesses as a case study and present it to my, the next generation of students. Because I think you also want to continually refine your product. You want to get constant feedback from your users, and that's one thing that social networking does. If there's anything about your program or your product that's not that good, somebody ought to let you know about it. Absolutely. And what's interesting about uh, um, online marketing mm -hmm. is that it's still in its nascency. 
there is a lot more that we'll have to learn as, as marketers and as business owners because it's constantly evolving. And it's a challenge as well as an opportunity. So if, if folks feel that they've been left behind by the internet revolution, there's a lot more opportunity. You can still learn, you can still come up to speed in terms of all the latest technologies and, and marketing techniques, and you can outrun folks who've been there. Um, if they don't, you know, if folks don't move fast enough, you can outrun them. Is there the potential to make really uh, good money in this type of business? Or are we um, talking largely about cottage industries, someone who's uh, cleaning out their attic and they have a bunch of old, you know, dolls to sell, stuff like I, I think there's an opportunity for both. Um, there's opportunity to uh, create a lifestyle business where you can earn enough so that you can free up time to do things that you love. But at the same time, there's opportunities to scale uh, these businesses into, into you know, millions, more than millions of dollars. Um, the interesting thing is, um, what I observe personally, is when you start off with a concept and uh, six months or a year into it, you realize that there's so much more that can be done. There's so many adjacencies that we, you end up discovering purely because of customer feedback. Customers will come and ask you, can you do this for me? Can you do beyond this? And you'll find customers in, in areas that you didn't think about before. So it, it, it really comes down to how much more time and money you're willing to invest into expanding. Well, what is really the most critical uh, item in the success of this type of business? Do you have to have a really beautiful website or does the product itself have to be good? Um, then there's your reputation, like after someone pays you, you have to ship it and it has to get there in good condition. So I guess all of these things would be factors. Absolutely. So having a good brand um, and good marketing message are, are sort of table stakes. Without that, um, most businesses will not attract customers. But the third most critical thing is how well you treat your customers. Um, so basic things like being responsive, answering their questions, um, dealing with any challenges you have, because... Taking back the product if they're not satisfied. Absolutely. So that is the number one thing that differentiates uh, our business from, from anyone else. And there is no way of hiding behind it, because your customers are going to be on Twitter, they are going to be on Facebook, and they will say good things and bad things. And you take the bad things in stride, and, and you build on, uh, on the good things. Do you lose a little bit of the human element in this type of business in that you never see your customers face to face? Uh, you never meet them in person. They're just little blips on your computer screen. Is that a loss? It's, that, that's, a, that's a great question. It's, it's a loss, and it's a gain in, in some ways, in my perspective. Um, the going online opens up uh, the entire world. So having a physical business, you're really um, constrained to that, that neighborhood or to that locality. Going online, the world is your oyster. You can, um, and in our example, we have students from all over the world, from countries that we would you know, have to look up on the map. And I think that part is also exhilarating to see uh, that we are bringing value to folks that, that we have never imagined that we could have reached any other way. If you sell in different countries, do you have to be familiar with the laws in those countries regarding shipping and postage and what type of items you can send? Is it, does it get more complicated to send overseas? Uh, it does, especially when you're shipping physical products. Uh, there are certain uh, restrictions in terms of what can be shipped, what cannot be shipped, uh, in terms of return policies and things like that. Um, but uh, the good thing is all of this information is online. So um, if you have a customer from a country that you've never shipped before, it's always good to look it up. Um, most of these regulations or restrictions are available online. Um, and then it's a, it's a learning process. So once you real, realize what the restrictions are with a certain country, it's, it's repeatable the next time you, um, you ship it to that country again. Do you think we're getting to the place that more and more types of businesses are going to be going online and there will be fewer businesses where you actually walk into a store to buy something? My perspective is, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it will be a combination of both. But every business will have to go online in some shape or fashion. The, uh, not being online will not be an option for, for, for a business, even if they're brick and mortar and located in a, in a physical space. So even if you have a manufacturing plant that manufactures cars, uh, can you or will you a be able to buy a car online? In fact, you can buy a car online today. So eBay Motors does exactly that. Is is buying and selling cars online, so it's a marketplace for cars. But you can imagine, I mean, you can go to 
any major manufacturer today and configure to order your car. So most businesses have a presence that's, that's online that, um, that helps customers do research and understand their products, understand the company, um, and maybe even buy the product online. Now we're talking about global markets. Do American sellers have overseas competition? Do we have people from Russia and China competing against us in the United States?